Lincoln, and I now introduce to you Cheryl and Derek here at the Glass City Grind. Hey, welcome to the Glass City Grind. I'm Cheryl. I'm Derek. We're still here. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. It's a good day. Before we even get started, we have to remind everyone oh. what tonight you have to do. Well, you should probably do it before you go to bed, even though it's really Sunday. I always do it. Or wait for Siri to tell you what time it is. <laughs> so we're talking about falling back. So change right. your clocks tonight. Please don't forget. Because that's the worst thing. People coming in like an hour late to church. <laughs> Not that yeah. I've been there lately, but... <laughs> oh, I was going to say. Are you sure? You know the worst thing in the world about the time change, though? It's like dark at 5.30. I know. Well, I... I Really wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about AM. I'm talking about PM. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you were always because you are an early riser. I get up early every day. Yes, you're like the first one on set. Always. And you're up early, but that is a good sign of a good, uh, healthy person, a fit person, and a businessman. That's oh, one of the things it? I said. Those are all in. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Because if you get up early and do fitness or start your day, you're less likely to not do it later in the day. Ah. Uh, well, I know I need to get it over with if I'm going to do it. Right. Later, I'm going to crash. I, 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 I've been trying to get back on the workout trying? schedule. Trying. Trying. Got to start somewhere. I have done it with my son, so okay. sometimes we have to do it later. So we just want to remind you to fall back, change your clocks. But we've been pretty busy around here. It's been very busy. We were actually here mm -hmm. at the State Bridge for Oktoberfest. Yes. And it was packed. It was packed here with other business people, other people in the community. What a nice event they it had really here. It really was. We had a lot of networking. I met this wonderful woman from First Solar, Mary. Yes. Wasn't she nice? She was very nice and very gracious. Really very nice. She had the most interesting stories about her work experience with First Solar and how, you know, great it is to work there. It was really, really cool. And you hardly ever hear someone that's worked for a long time, or even briefly for a company, and really <laughs> and really gone on and on about how much. Right, to a stranger. Yes. So, so that, that was really cool. That was a great event. And we want to thank Staybridge, because you know this is where we have our studio at. And um, really, if you're a local business and you're looking to have a, a meeting room. They have great meeting rooms. And they have great food if you're having guests come in and out of town. They have three nights a week where they actually serve. Uh, food for the people that stay here, and they call it a social, and then they have breakfast in the morning. Ooh. I've tried to sneak in a couple times. They're like, are you here last night? <laughs> I'm like, no. No? <laughs> but anyway. So, so what did you have going on this weekend? Um, you know, we also had um, the Buckeye game happen, which was, uh, hey, listen, I had two, really, I had three rough sports things in a row. Okay. Right? Last Friday night was the last football game for Springfield, where my children go, and it was freezing. And it was raining. Were the lights on? And the lights were on. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the team did not do well at all that day. So that was terrible for me. And then Saturday, I was pumped for the Buckeye game. And it was, well, it ended well, but it was, they were giving me a heart attack. Yeah, I was there. And you were there, and I was, I was mad there. at you about that, I no, think. No, we can't be mad. It was great. It was. I was sitting in the second row. I mean, I was right there. You know, if they threw a towel, I would have caught it. Do I look like I'm happy for him? Because he knows I'm a Buckeye. But it was an amazing no, thing. Now, now, I'm a recent Buckeye convert. Okay. And only because my nephew is going to go to school there and play football next year. Oh, he is? He is. Oh, so we can maybe um, get some inside scoop? Or... We've got to get a scoop. Yes. So. But, you know, the energy there, what was the energy there? Because I actually went to a local establishment for, like, the first half. Right. And then went home for the second half. And I know people there, it was packed, and they weren't happy until the very end right well you know to be honest with you when it started off everybody was off the charts and then that kid ran the ball back 97 yards and the whole mood wasn't that the first 15 seconds to, yeah it was mm -hmm. but you know what if you were there like really there you could see that they were really dominating most of the game they just kept having mistakes right they kept them back but at the end it was pandemonium it was awesome oh my gosh were you exhausted Definitely. Because at home, I was exhausted. Yeah, but then I came back, and guess what I did when I got oh, back? Oh, tell us, because you did, because I, did, I actually didn't, wasn't able to do I went, did. yeah, because somebody wasn't feeling well. I went to the Halloween Toledo a party, yes. 2017, yes. with uh, Dustin. Yes. Remember, he was here last week. Mm -hmm. It was nice. It was a lot of fun. I was a pirate. I did see that. Yeah. And we can post some more of those pictures, too. We I will have we to. Go to, the, go to our Instagram page, and yes. uh, Glass City Grind, and you'll see... Me dressed up as a pirate. Now, he put on a very, very nice Halloween party for the city. And it seemed like he had a great turnout. He did. And a lot of creative costumes uh, for this holiday season, which means next year we're going to have to up our game. 
Well, just a little bit. I was too tired to, to wait to the last second to figure out who was the best costume. Right. But I'm sure he'll come on and tell us who won yes. and send us pictures. Yes, we we'll post them. Yes. We'll figure it out and post Definitely. Them. But we have a great show today. It's going to be a wild one. We got some really interesting things coming. And interesting in. things yeah, coming. We got Imagination Station That's today. what I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, we're going to be scientists. We're going to learn some stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't test me out. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the mayors coming on today. Mm -hmm. Elections coming up. Yes. And the election is coming up. That's another thing we do want to say. And we do want to make sure we um, talk about Coach Mike. Oh yes. Coach, Coach Mike is coming. Coach Mike's coming in. So that's what we got today. At the conveniently located Staybridge Suites, Toledo, Perrysburg, Rossford, you can choose from a studio, one bedroom, or two bedroom suite complete with sofa bed and full kitchen, providing you with all the comfort and warmth of home. Don't forget the great amenities as well. Call 419-872-3700 to book your room. And remember, we're hiring. We are here with Coach Mike Robb. Now, most people don't know his name is Robin's son. We just got to yeah. joke about that. But we call him Coach Mike Robb. And Coach is an expert at hands-on expert, even though he played for Toledo, he's a hands-on expert Ooh. at local sports and, and even national sports. So coach, what are you gonna be bringing to us this year? Well, I'll bring a lot of different things to you this year. Um, a lot from an aspect of Toledo being BG. Oh, what? Wait a minute. I, what wait, I, 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 I am in the middle. Wait, seven in a row? Do you see? Why <laughs> seven in a row? Okay, why do we start with that? Because that's relevant. I mean, it's the game's coming up in a couple of weeks here, so I mean, I feel like we should start the show off with a little bit of a... Uh... Hey, could you guys ever do like a little rundown, playoff, anything? Look, I don't even really know the football yeah. terms. <laughs> I can throw, and we can see who can be the fastest no. and best no. catcher. No. A rocket or be, a No, BG. because he has, I have many, many years on him. <laughs> so that counts in sports. I actually work with his son. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, if I can substitute my son, then it's an issue with Jay Laws. I mean, his son got to be <laughs> Keep it in the family, right? So you yeah. do like training, now yeah. that you brought that up. You like training a lot of the young athletes here in our city. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that program and what you've started and how you work with them. Well, I came to Toledo to play football, got hurt being silly playing basketball. Um, Isn't that against the rules? It, it, yeah, it should it, be. It, and, and that's why I didn't end up getting on the field, getting mm -hmm. to do what I wanted to do because I made some mistakes. But you know, we always learn from that. So from that route, I, f I figured I'd try to figure out how to be great at life at that point. You said, football's gone, what do you have next? And I said, well, the only thing I like is helping other people. Mm -hmm. You know, so I said, I didn't really know how to get to that point. I joined a fraternity, joined different organizations, student government, and then by the time college was ending, I wanted to coach football. So I worked with the football team at UT for a couple of years and then Coach high school ball for several, seven years, and now with BCSN. So everything that I've wanted to do, I've kind of got there. But with the training aspect, that's where it started. Because the speed and agility was what I was a good at. I was fast athlete. I was quick. But now on um, the fourth and go athletics, I mean, we started back in 2010 with two or three athletes. And now it's like over 5,000 athletes we work with, help kids get over $4 million in scholarships. Wow, so it's a dream amazing. come true. Um, we have really good people on our staff, um, and our team is about 25 people deep now when it wow. started with one person. I do have to mention real quick when you said you started with one or two people. I sent you a picture at the Springfield game I was yeah. at, which was freezing cold, and then we lost. So it was a really wonderful, <laughs> yeah, fantastic right. Friday. Yeah. Um, and I sent you a picture of someone, and he's like, my son started with him years ago, like when you first started. And that boy, John, happens to be my daughter's friend. Hmm. And you are his coach. He still works out with you all the time. Yeah, John's a great young man. Watched him since he was in fifth grade, grow up to be the nice young man he is now. He's we'll a, keep our eye on him. Yeah, he, he, you don't have to worry about him. Don't worry about him. He's a good guy. He's one of the good ones. <laughs> one of the good okay. ones. <laughs> all right, so what's hot in local sports right now, Coach? Well, let's start with Toledo Rockets. I mean... Again? Again. Okay. Again. Yeah, no, they, so are, they are doing a great they, job. Yeah. They are. They, they have one loss on the season to Miami. Um, which is an undefeated team. They've been playing great. They um, four and zero in conference play, 
They play Northern Illinois. We'll see how that turns out. We'll see whatever happens. Whatever happens, happens. But this is a very good football program. They are bowl eligible for like the eighth time in the past 10 years. That's great. So this is a very good That's program. Exciting. And um, mm -hmm. beyond that, it's time for high school playoffs. Yeah. Wow. You know, high school playoffs is taking off, and you got a lot of good teams in the Whitmers and Central Catholics, mm -hmm. Northviews, Anthony Waynes, you know, uh, Wasion, uh, I'm sorry, Swan. A lot of good teams make it to the playoffs. So right now, we're going to start with Central and Glenville. Glenville's a perennial powerhouse from Cleveland area. That's where I'm from, and uh, that's a team you never want to see because Ted Ginn played for there, Troy Smith played for them. Oh, so right. some of the wow. best football Ohio players. Yes, yeah. yeah, a lot of guys that, that were very good football players came out that program. So now Central has to mount up and take on that task, although they're the one seed. You can't count out of Glenville, uh, Ted Ginn's uh, senior coach team because he puts guys in the league. And when anytime you have guys like that on the staff, I mean, you know they're going to have talent. Okay. Whitmer plays uh, – Plays a, a very good team out of Lorraine this year as well. So mm -hmm. Lorraine's eight and two. They got a quick, fast team, but Whitmer's got really good players. They got Riley Keller, the best quarterback right. in the area right now. Right. I mean, I'm I'm going to say it, he is the best quarterback. Uh oh, in the you area. heard it here. You heard it yeah, here first. Yeah, he, he's the best in the area. I mean, it is what it is. Let him go out there and do it. He's a sophomore, two Division one offers, and he's taking his team to the playoffs back to back years. How can you compete with that? Uh, he's good. They're undefeated. Let's see them uh, take the championship this year. So those are the two hot ones that. Okay. Excellent. Well, we know that you're going to be coming on with us as a correspondent, extended member of the Glass Divine family. We're so excited. Thanks Before we let you go today, do you want to tell people where if, they're, if they have an athlete or someone that wants to get some coaching and some where they can get that from? 419 Football on Twitter, and that's just for everybody. I just like 419 Football. I uh, started mm -hmm. with that. But then on Facebook, just 4th and Goal Athletics or 4th and Goal. Or just find me. Coach Mike Rob, I'm friendly. I respond to you. Just don't send me nothing crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and we're going to be right back after this. It's me, Cheryl, right here back with the Glass City Grind. Look at this. I am with Dan from Imagination Station. Hi. Hi. Welcome. I Now listen, I have my safety glasses, yes. which is always important when we're doing scientific stuff here. Absolutely. I'm going to put them on, and it's going to make me feel special. But I want you to know, Dan, at least Emily did tell you, I got it up in science. That's okay. Well, that's why we're here, right? And I love that, because this is the thing, though, about Imagination Station. You're so creative. And you come up with all these things for children and young people and adults yeah. that it makes you enjoy it and like it. Everybody can learn something. So today, I thought we'd bring in something that is really fun to talk about. It's really fun when you can do all kinds of demonstrations. And it's something you can actually get your hands on. Oh. A lot of times we do things that we can't do in other places. But you can actually get dry ice and bring it home and do some fun yes. experiments with it. As long as you're being careful because uh, it's dry ice. So it's very, very cold. So you mm -hmm. have to kind of be careful. You want to wear gloves so you don't get frostbite because it's actually 190 degrees below zero. Oh my goodness, Fahrenheit. wow. So it's very cold. So you don't want to like hold it in the palm of your hand for a long time. Okay. And it's really cool because it is actually changing from a solid into a gas. It's like not melting at all. That's what they call dry ice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't turn into a liquid. You can see I've got like a big hunk. Yeah. And you can see it's got it's kind of got like a spooky vibe, so you yes. can use it around Halloween time, yes. which is pretty cool. And I can blow oh, on it like that, and you can that. see, yeah. And you can see that's actually a little cloud. That's not the carbon dioxide gas; yeah. it's just a little cloud. Right. And it's called sublimation. So I thought we would do take a look in here and try and see what's happening. So I can drop it in here, and you can see it changing from a solid form of carbon dioxide gas yes. into oh that gas form, which is really cool. That is amazing. Okay, and it creates all these really cool bubbles. It gets this nice, you know, spooky effect. Yes. You see like a bubbling cauldron thing. Now, if you do uh, do experiments with this at home, you want to make sure you put it in like a tall container like this. Okay. Because both kids and adults want to like see get in and, and touch this yes. stuff, and it could be a little dangerous. So you got to be careful. Okay. Okay. Now, it's actually made from carbon dioxide. And I thought we could do a fun thing and see that carbon dioxide. So I've got in this beaker, this is why you put head and you put your glove on. Yes, I have a glove you on. Take some dry ice and drop it in, in that container there. I've got some more. Beautiful. Oh, nice thank work. Thank you, thank you. Good form. Okay, so you see that purple color? Yes, my favorite color. You can see what's happening. It actually changed. Oh. It went through a couple different stages there. It did. Uh, and that's because when it sublimates like that, it actually gives off carbonic acid, which is an acid. 
it's okay, it's, it won't hurt you, but okay. uh, it gives off that acid, and I had an indicator in there that changes color based on acid or base. Okay. So then it can tell us. So then it can tell us that that acid is present. Now. This would actually be, if you were having a holiday party, and you could keep it, like, could you imagine walking in a room or a yeah. table? Yeah, like, I mean, and that's one of the main things people use it for if they have holiday parties or things like that. Yeah, exactly. have, like, a bubbling cauldron Ooh. and things like that. Yes. Now. It is made from carbon dioxide, and where are some other places where we could find carbon dioxide, do you know? Um, it, well, you know, you're not supposed to have it in your house or in your specific place. Right, you want to have, like, like the carbon monoxide. Yeah. Carbon dioxide is actually the bubbles, like, in oh, soda yes. or yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so I thought I would prove that to you. So this is making carbon dioxide. Can you stick out your tongue? <laughs> of course. Can you stick out your tongue? Go ahead. Okay. Can you taste it? There is, like, something. What is that? You oh, taste it? You can oh, taste it. Try again. Yes, I can. You taste it? It's kind of like that little bite from like a soda that like you can get. Like a Sprite. Like a Sprite. It's the exact same thing. And that comes from the carbon dioxide. It's that carbonation. And we're Look getting it there with our dry ice. And why do we like carbonation so much? I, I don't know. Maybe it's that little little bit of bitterness. Yeah. I don't know. But it's kind of fun. And also the bubbles in your mouth. It's just a pleasant, fun. pleasant I've, I've feeling. I've never had that right? before. That was very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Now. We can do some more things. Oh man, I've got all kinds of stuff. Okay, so we can actually add some into this one right here. And we can actually make something, we call them boo bubbles, because they're kind of like ghost bubbles. Yeah. And we can make them here, and you can actually <gasps> grab them, and you've got your glove on there. Let's see if, we, if you can catch one here, because bubbles don't really like dry hands, but they don't mind gloves that much. But I feel like I'm powerful here. Like I watch. All right, just try and catch it. Try and catch it. Let the bubble come to you. All right, do one with the bubble. There it is. I am one with the bubble. <laughs> oh my god! Can you see this? All right, let's see if we can catch another one. Oh. Get two at a time. Oh. Oh. Oh, I did oh, we my lost hand. that one. See? I wasn't supposed to do that. That's, That's okay. It's okay. okay. Very good. Now the reason it's not popping is because it interacts with the outside of that glove. Yeah. And it doesn't like pop. But we have oils and dirt and stuff right. on our hands. Right. This is a clean glove. And it actually works perfect. It just keeps bouncing and I'm not just keeps to bouncing up. Can you like try and like juggle it? Okay, I will. Go ahead. Okay. Like that? <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh I, I'm too aggressive. That one. That's okay. That's okay. But so that's, that's cool. another that's fun thing you can do with the bubbles. And that keeps kids busy at home. If you have you something can, similar to that, absolutely that's you can do easy. this at home. You can do that. We have kids that are occupied for hours making, yes. making these bubbles. Now, I've got one more thing. Okay, and if you want, oh, you took okay. your glug off. Can that you down. do me a favor? Yes. Okay, uh, if you would take a few of these pieces and put it in this fish tank right in front of us, can you see it? Perfect. And I'll take a couple and put them in there as well. You guys always have stuff to do so what? at the Imagination Station that keeps our kids occupied at Absolutely. Bit. So what we're doing right now is creating some carbon dioxide gas, mm -hmm. and, but it's actually heavier than normal air, so mm -hmm. it will actually sink down to the bottom, and we can use that carbon dioxide to actually put out these flames pretty fun. But, so, I've got that scoop there. What I want you to do is reach down to the bottom. Don't scoop up any water, but scoop up just some gas. Okay, slowly. And then I want you to pour it on top of our lit candles. Did I do it right? It just... You did it exactly right. It puts them out. It puts them out. Okay, that's from the carbon I dioxide. When he's like really trying to tell me to straighten up. And calm him down a little bit, well, but then put his fire out. Calm me down. That's the problem. <laughs> I just want to like put his little. Already had even you have any left? You might want to get some more. Oh, you do. Oh, okay, you do have some. There. Look at that. So what you're doing is you're removing the oxygen from the equation and replacing it with carbon dioxide. And we did, we can't oh. have any fire without oxygen. That's right? amazing. It's amazing stuff. So dry ice. It's an amazing material. Very cold. Just be careful when you're doing things yeah. at home with it. Well, Dan, we love you guys at Imagination Station, so we want to tell everybody, make sure you follow them on all of their social media. Let everybody yes. know what's and coming up we've going got, down there. We've got lots of things going on for the holidays. Yes. So if you go on our website, imaginationstationpluto.org, we got brand new workshops, brand new activities, all kinds of fun things coming up for the holiday season. So get on there and check yes. it out. We love Imagination Station, and we're going to be right back after this. Are you sure? What would happen if I put this on here? Welcome back guys, DJ Academic here. We have a special guest with us today, Mayor Paula Hicks-Hudson, coming up next.
Hey, thanks for joining us on Glass City Grind. Derek and I are so pleased to be joined today with Mayor Paula Hicks Hudson. Good Welcome. Morning. Good morning. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. It's a week away from the election, but you know, I'm still standing. So You're good. still standing. Yes. Are you I, happy it's only a week away? I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Well, let me ask this. Mm -hmm. What is the best part about election season? Sure. And maybe is there a worst part? The best part is that you really get a chance to talk to people, you know, one on one and to engage with them and talk about what you're doing and what you want to do. And I like that. Um, the worst part is you have to call up folks and ask for money. Yeah. That's a, that's a Girl, problem. I have to do that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even running for anyone. I have to do that too, actually. <laughs> We're all on the same boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, that's the hard part. Yeah. But. Are you ever shocked about anything um, sure. someone says to you or that their yeah. thought on something like just catches you totally off guard? Well, yes. I can understand that people may not like you know, you or something, but I, I'm always shocked how rude some people can be. Mm -hmm. And that, that is something that, you know, we used to be more civil and just, you know, when someone calls or something, you can say, no, thank you. That's what I do. Rather than to say something that's kind of a real negative Nelly, Nelly kind of deal. Right. But I think that's because, you know, we have, have Facebook, so you can be anonymous and be mean. Yes. Right. So, yeah. yeah. But other than that, mostly, but I think um, this is it's mostly a positive mean. Yeah, I think there are. Because on Facebook, you see my face and I'm replying and I'm being mean. You just people are just rude. Nowadays. I think. So. Yeah, I think people are, are agitated. I think so. Uh, unfortunately, I think our, right now we're living in a time where it's okay to say just nasty things to folks, and that you're supposed to be able to get it off your chest. But I don't think that that's what we're designed to do. So that's a, that's kind of right. a negative. We need to press that. a reset button on so. our yeah. kindness and all that. I think so. I know there's a couple of hot topics that me and Derek were talking about that we're interested in and what you're thinking about sure. um, as far as where the city's going. And with one of the things I'm definitely involved in is the human trafficking. Yes. And, you know, I think it was getting better, but then we don't think it's getting better. And I just wonder what our pulse is and what our thoughts as sure. a community we can do? Well, I think, you know, I was in a forum yesterday and the question about trafficking came up, but it was talking about, you know, the two incidences with the pastors and then with the police officer. And I think if we look at it from that perspective, it's not getting better because everyone thinks that trafficking is, you know, those guys, you know, scrubby, mm -hmm. you know, truck drivers or yes. someone that's far removed, when in fact it can be something as close to your next door neighbor. So, but I do think that what we are able to do is to talk about it and to bring more light and more information. And as I told the, the folks yesterday, that if, you, if a young person or even an old person feels that they're in a, an uncomfortable situation, they need, to, they need to say, I have a right to feel this way and I'm going to remove myself from it. It's hard to do because mm -hmm. of that, that whole power play. Yes. Right. But it's, it's something that we have to do. So. I think we are more aware of it, but I don't think that we understand that trafficking is not this big enterprise. It actually could be a very intimate interpersonal relationship yes. that we need to be aware of yeah. and, to, and have that look. I always believe that you know, God gives us a, in, that um, in, internal, intuition. Uh, intuition. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we need to, to act on it. And, and don't you feel like what you're saying too is like when you think something is off, right? It really it might be. Is. It, it might be off. Is. And it is, and, and it could be off for you, right. and it could be a misunderstanding. Yes, but it's off for you. And even though I talked about earlier about the civility, we have to respect that person. Right. And we and I think that person should be able to say, "I'm not comfortable," mm -hmm. and and therefore, okay, let's back off. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what are we doing? Talking about being uncomfortable. What are we doing for our business leaders, that entrepreneurs, which is like the number one growing. Mm -hmm. Uh, aspect of our economy to make it easier to conduct business in the city. That is back to this. I mean, I'm going to say this just quickly and as easily as possible. <laughs> okay. we are, the city of Toledo is open for business to partner with small businesses, big businesses, what have you. In the three years I've been mayor, we have helped three billion dollars worth of investment in our community. With billion their, with a bill, B. With a B. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we have been able to um, 39 new companies, uh, 9,500 new and retained jobs just in the three years tied to that $3 billion number. 
And what does that mean under my administration? I have uh, beefed up our inspection department. We had six, now we have 10 inspectors who have multiple certificates. Uh, we have a, a new way in which you can submit plans electronically. Mm -hmm. You have to come down downtown to do that. Um, if there's anything that we are missing, we are trying to correct it. And I, and I in fact, said we will correct it because um, I'm going to be very selfish. If you make money, that's income tax revenue that we can use to fix our Absolutely. roads, yes. to, do, to do all those things that we need to do. So it's like, why would we be a hindrance to business? Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I am working very hard on that, you know, not only on that side, but on the employment side. There's about 45, 6,500 6, vacancies where people are looking for folks to work. Really? In, North, in 10 miles of downtown Toledo, 6,500. Right. So people Always need jobs. <laughs> they need to go to, you know, um, Ohio means jobs yes. and apply because they're this vacancy. Well, but repeat I'm, that again. Ohio means, means jobs. jobs. Yes. And, and that's, you know, that's at the source downtown okay. and, and just to get connected because if everyone is working, it, again, that's what makes it good for all of us. Right, right. absolutely. Right. So when you talk about small businesses, I, you know, I had a small business as a as a lawyer, so I know what it means to have to make payroll, yes. take care of the bills, as well as to make a living. So I don't want anyone not to be successful in our community. Right. Well, that's a blessing because right. we all want to make absolutely. more money, and it's a win win win. I mean, absolutely, across right. the board. Yeah, if anyone that says, "Oh, the city is is trying to prevent that," that is like the most. Uh, asinine thing to say because it makes no sense right 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 and i don't do senseless or useless things right well, we have one big question for okay. you yes. before we let you go we know your busy schedule the water what oh, about yes. the water we talked well, about that yes. <laughs> yeah. the you water know, every we once in a while <laughs> yeah every once in a while you know you're going to costco or kroger's and there's like, like no so much water and he's like, oh my God, is there a crisis going on? Is there something I should know? And I buy eight cases just right. in case I get home and there's an announcement. So right. are we progressing in, in cleaning or purifying our, our water? Have you had any me message from the city of Toledo that you cannot drink the water? No. 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 Since I've been mayor, we have made sure the water is safe to drink each and every day. $525 million investment into our water treatment plant to wow. expand... Uh, the ca capacity of it, as well as to make sure that we have the high, the, the latest technology uh, to to attack the issue of the algal bloom and and the the water. You know, every, every summer we worry about the algal bloom, which is a big deal with the microsystem. But there are so many other things that could be in that water that we are required by US EPA, Ohio EPA, to take care of so that when you turn the tap, the water is safe to drink. Mm -hmm. And we instituted the dashboard so you can always look and see. Okay. Not listening to the rumors. Not <laughs> or Facebook. Or oh Facebook. Oh, yeah, so we can actually. go to the city's website. To the city's website. There's a dashboard. There's a dashboard. During the, during the harmful algal bloom season, mm -hmm. it'll, it will always tell you the condition of the raw water in the lake as well as the water at the tap. So when you turn the tap on, that water can, no matter what happens in the lake, that water is always safe to drink. And, and that's a pledge that not only I make, uh, because I think that's what's important for the city to do. We have to make sure that, it, that everything is safe. So water safe. You know, we're still working on violence in our streets and, and in, our, in our homes. Um, but everything has to be, because that's why you have government, right. to make sure that the people are safe. Mm -hmm. So, no, water safe to drink. Water safe to drink. Okay. Water is safe to drink. We should hashtag that. Water <laughs> is safe yeah. to drink. And Toledo water. Toledo water. <laughs> yeah. right. and, and that uh, we made it through another se a season. with, And it was this was an unusually hot yes. mm -hmm. season this summer. And the dredging in the river, all those things came together for us to have the, the green water. But again, the, you know, we get our water out of Lake Erie. We mm -hmm. don't get it out of the Maumee River, so it's safe to drink. Right. Gosh, well, we the just Glass thank City, you. yeah, yes. Glass City loves clean water. <laughs> yes. yes. And we thank the mayor for coming and visiting with us this week. Yes. We'll be right back. Yes. Listen, don't forget to change your clock. Why I not? his clock out, <laughs> and we're going to send it to DJ Academic, and we'll see you guys next week, okay? Just